it's not. I was going to say it's sorted by alphabetical, but um, they start you off with a tutorial on um, box radius and polygon searches and so on. Finding information, that's a good one. But where I want to start today is I want to start on importing and mapping data. So if you look at this, you have all kinds of code in here, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to pull this over so you can see it more. And that's what I like. I like examples with code. So to make this super easy, uh, what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this. This is creating a basic map. It's going to be my script tag. This is what I need. Uh, and it's going to show me the HTML that I need. And it's going to show me down here what I get. So that's exciting. So I'm going to simply drop it in like that. Copy and paste. It's the best kind of demo ever. Copy and paste code. I think everyone should do that. So if I refresh, hopefully I will get, and I do, a map. Well, that's exciting. Well, let's continue on here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is cruise down this example site, because the next thing is going to show me how to add a push pin. So I'm going to copy and paste that as well. And I've got to move these windows out of the way. And to add a push pin, I use a map object. I add what's called a virtual earth shape, VE. That's what virtual, or VE stands for virtual earth. I'm going to have it be a push pin. And I'm going to have it pop it right in the center of the site. Uh, this right here is known as a uh, coordinate. Uh, it has a latitude and longitude to it. But you can just ask the map, hey, man, what's your center? And it'll tell you and give you back a set of coordinates. So uh, I've added that in. And I need to save my page. There we go, and now if I refresh it, I should get a nice pin. Yep, that's what I want. All right, well, the pin's groovy. doesn't really do much for us. What I need to do now is I need to add some text. So title and description would be great. So there it is. I think what I'm going to do is just drop this here, set the properties of it. Look at that. HTML embedded in JavaScript. Doesn't that just make you happy? So if I right click this, and now that's groovy. Now let's do it again. There we go. You got to hover over it. Push pin title looks like a broken image. That's okay. Uh, but isn't that neat? So it's kind of cool. You hover over it and it gives you a little bit of a status thing saying I'm loading something. Well, that's exactly what we need to do. Nothing more, nothing less. So I'm going to take this code right here and get started building out all of the dinner. Uh, pins, let's call them that, and loading them on the page. Well, this is good code to get started with, but I can refine this a little bit. In fact, I'm going to because I have some problems, as you've probably noticed. Uh, right here, I have the ghost of an end of a head tag. Also, I have duplicate body tags. I have one tag in the site master, which sort of uh, oh, surrounds this, this content page, if you will. And I'm relying on the onload tag here inside my HTML. And that's, uh, well, it's not in exactly elegant. So what I can do is I can use jQuery. And I'm sure you've heard of jQuery before. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference it. And in case you didn't know, jQuery comes with the MVC template. You get a number of files here. As you can see, you've got jQuery proper, as you will. Uh, and also the min file. The min file squeezes out things like white space and debug information. Uh, makes it nice and small. So I'll just be using regular old jQuery today. And in here, I'm going to get rid of this link and we'll just add a reference to scripts and then jQuery uh, dash 1.3.2 dot js great okay that's referenced now what I want to do is I want to hook in to uh, jQuery's built-in ready function uh, and what that means is when a element is rendered or basically has been um, added into the document object model, it is then ready. And so that can be thought of as an event. And so I want to hook in to the documents ready event, sort of like body on load. So uh, what I'm going to do is write a little jQuery syntax. I'll put it at the very, very top here. And this is sort of the ubiquitous jQuery call. Uh, and usually always begins with a selector. And that's the dollar sign. The selector means here comes a selection request or a query. That's why they call it jQuery, in case you've ever wondered, is you're sort of querying your uh, document object for elements. And in this case, uh, we can do a number of things in here. I can say, well, give me uh, an ID. Uh, give me the my map, the div or the object with the ID my map. It'll run out and grab it, and then you can manipulate it using a code here. Uh, you can also say, here, give me uh, everything with the class foo, or give me all you know list items and so on. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I just simply want to grab the document element, go select the document element, and then for the ready function, I could spell ready. What I'm going to do is on ready, I'm going to pass in this 
function right here. And then I'm going to close it off like a good developer. There we are. So when the document's ready, I want you to run this function. And that function is simply going to be this down here. Okay, then I'm going to rename to load map. There we are. And I'm going to pop it in there. Load map. Good. I'm going to leave this up here because I know there's going to be a few more things I'm going to be doing with that map. But I'm going to load up that map and that should be good to go. Yeah, everything looks good. So what I want to do is just hit F5, make sure the map loads. And it does. Great. So we're all jQuery'd up. I feel better about this. Now let's see if we can add in some data. One of the tools that you get when you download the ASP.NET MVC project templates and you do a file new MVC project is jQuery. And a lot of web developers have heard of it. I know if a lot of them have used it, but some of them haven't and they're not quite sure what it is. It's kind of a funny name, uh, jQuery. Uh, what I'd like to do is really quickly show you how you can use it um, because it's really, really powerful. Uh, so to get right to it, what I want to do is just tell you, here's the jQuery site at jQuery.com. You can read a lot here, including all the documentation and kind of see some of the things that it can do for you. Uh, but for straight away, the things that it can do for you, you should head over to the UI uh, elements here. You, the jQuery UI is kind of a separate, uh, I don't want to say it's separate from jQuery, but it's sort of an add-on or it's on top of a different layer. And what the jQuery UI will do is we'll add all kinds of widgets to your site that kind of replace uh, server components that you might be missing in the web forms world. So if we go over to doc, uh, demos and documentation uh, to take a look at some of these widgets, well let's go ahead and look at them. Uh, you have things like the accordion, which is pretty groovy. Uh, there's draggable and droppable components. Let me drag it around. And you have all kinds of things you can do. So this is all stuff that's built into the jQuery UI stuff, including tabs. Uh, there's a progress bar even which is kind of groovy. Now one of the main things that a lot of people don't know about this is jQuery is themed. So all the tools that you see here you can change the theme on. So you might want to say, well I'm not a big fan of the orange and blue. I'm really more of a dark guy. And so they have kind of a darker theme, which is pretty cool. So if we head over to the accordion and we change the uh, thing to darkness, you can see that indeed it changes as well, which is kind of cool. All right. Well, if you don't like what they have, you can head over to the themes page. And this is where I like to go. Because on here, you can change whatever it is you don't like about the themes. You don't like a certain color, a certain radius. You can change it, and when you're done with it, you can download the theme that you've created. You can have it very specific to your stuff. And if you're like me and you say, well, you know what, these themes are, are pretty good. I like this one right here. It's kind of nice. Uh, so this is the overcast themes. You can tell by the name right here. Uh, and what I really like is this kind of highlight error boxes that they show you. Uh, they also have dialogue overlays, all these icons, there's so much you can do. And look at this dialogue, it's kind of cool, nice modal dialogue. Um, anyway, if you want to download it, uh, this is another nice feature, you go over here to the download page and you can choose the things that you want. You don't have to have all of it, so if you don't want a huge file and you only need drag and drop, let's say, you can uncheck everything and just go for these. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to download all of this stuff and I'm going to choose my overcast theme. And so what that's going to do is it's going to include that theme in my download. And the current one is 172. So when I hit download, down it comes. I'm going to open this up and show you the files inside. I downloaded my desktop and dropped everything in a brand new folder. And inside here is a nice HTML page that you get uh, with the download. If you double click this, it'll open up. And here's all the samples that you're going to need which is great. So if you need any kind of guidance or how do I do this, uh, you just simply right click here, view sorts, and it'll show you uh, how you can work it on your page. Uh, and there's also a nice development bundle if you want to get in there and, and start working on stuff, you sure can.